Well, we're back inside Fisher Stadium to wrap things up on the post-game show, which is brought to you by the Maroon Club. Every gift matters every year. Join the Maroon Club today. Matt Province with our experts, Phil Ng and Maurice Bennett. And guys, we're going to send it down to John Leone in a minute. But i got to say, for a game at the halftime, that left us kind of feeling uncertain about where this team was going. Pretty good second half. It started offensively again with the play of Drew Reed. Yeah, sure was. I mean, tail of two halves, obviously. And the defense came up big. And Drew Reed, you know, fell a little short. But you gotta, you know, got to give them a lot of credit. You know, really led that team down for two scores and uh, just came up a little bit short. Now, Maurice, you've been a bit of a soothsayer in trying to figure this out. You said that the defense needed to stay off the field in the first half. They didn't. They gave up 28 points. But in the second half, all of a sudden, they were able to do that. How do you go from allowing the 28 points to a very good offense to completely shutting down this Raiders offense? I think what you're alluding to is this was a game of two halves, right? The first half, they looked pretty much awful. Second half, they did an awesome job. We had a bunch of guys making plays. Saw Mike Bowles out there making a few plays on defense. So, I mean, really, the second half was a championship half. Uh, the first, first half is something you can forget about. But, hey, you take the momentum from the second half, move on, uh, play Fordham. And tough game coming up here next week, and, you know, we got Lehigh after that. Kind of the irony now of being a Lafayette Leopards fan is that next week you'll have to root for Lehigh, something that's almost blasphemy here in the Lafayette community, and that is because, of course, Colgate is playing Lehigh, and then, of course, the Leopards played Lehigh the following week following the Fordham game where things could still happen for this team to figure as a champion of the Patriot League. We'll talk more about that in a moment, but a guy who's been downstairs along those sidelines embracing the cold and running with it, the head coach of our staff, John Leone. Yeah, it was pretty cold, man, but it sure did heat up in the second half. Coach, you know, all year long you've been preaching to this team, never quit, never quit. They sure didn't. A heck of a second half, but you just came up a little short. Well, there's no doubt about it. And, again, it was a game of possessions. And when you had a possession, you had a score. And, again, a, a complete breakdown uh, offensively and defensively up front in the first half. Uh, but, you know, credit our kids and our staff and make some adjustments and come out. A lot of fight in the dog, and that's what the last thing I said to him coming out. We're going to find out how much fight there is in this dog and how much heart they had left, and, uh, you know, they battled to the bitter end. So, um, you know, it, it is what it is at this point, but we still uh, control our own destiny to make something happen here. we got two top 20 teams to play, which we said all along. Uh, it's certainly disappointing. Probably the toughest job now is just to pick ourselves up off the ground the way you do in this great game of football and come back fighting next week. And there certainly is an awful lot to build on, Coach, from that second half. But take us through probably the, if you want to look back, and there's so many plays in a football game, but the fourth down and one. You know, you were driving. The momentum was clearly there. Uh, take us through that play and your thoughts. Well, you know, we put Kess in, in there, and, you know, he's our big heavy back. Now, you know, again, I overrode the... Uh, you know, our, our OC wanted to, you know, take a shot, play action. You know, maybe I should have left him. It's my decision in those uh, critical situations. But, again, I always believe if you can't get a half a yard in a situation where you need it, then then maybe, hey, maybe you don't deserve it. So it was certainly disappointing. Hindsight's always twenty twenty. I thought we had a helmet to helmet on the last play. I'll certainly be looking at that. Well, Greg Kessel also gave you a big lift in the second half, Coach. Understandable. It's just one of those things. Two really good football teams. A lot of pride, a lot of history between these two teams, Coach. Good luck next week. Fordham's going to be a tall order. Then we've got the big one coming up. But as you said, a lot to play for. Well, there's still a lot to play for. A lot of things going to happen over the next two weeks. And we still have our chance to get our share of that championship. And we'll fight to the bitter end. You can count on it. Great comeback, Coach. Good luck next week. Uh, we're going to turn our attention uh, for the first time uh, this year. And uh, not that he hasn't been talked about a whole lot. Drew Reed, uh, boy, the ball was in your hands down the stretch in the second half uh, for a freshman. Just take us through the year, if you will. I mean, we can talk about this game, but you really have given this team a spark. Take us through uh, the evolution of, of, of your freshman year, where you started, where you are now. Uh, you know, it, it was a lot coming in as a freshman, you know, went through camp, went through all those things, just learning the offense. You know, it, it took me a while to... Um, you know, learn those sorts of things. But, you know, by now I've got a good grasp on, on what we want to do against certain teams and what we want to do. But just, you know, tonight, you know, it wasn't enough. Well, you know, you're playing with a, a huge level of confidence right now. One more quick question, Drew. Uh, as a freshman, you know, you got guys like Mark Ross and, 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 and Demetrius uh, uh, on the edges. Uh, do they look to you uh, uh, as their leader now? Um, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily say they look to me as a leader, but um, I, I try to be a leader. And, uh, you know, they, they tell me all the time that they believe in me and the whole line and the whole offense, you know, they, everybody on the team, really, they, they tell me they believe, me, believe in me. And that just, uh, you know, it gives me a lot of confidence, and, and I have a lot of confidence in them as well. 
Team's playing a whole lot better right now. you got still two big games left and still a chance to get a share of this title. Good luck going forward, Drew. Thank you. You got it. Drew Reed, the freshman quarterback. Uh, Gary, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Matt and uh, Philip and Maurice, uh, a heck of a second half down here. Thanks for all your help. We'll see you next week when we entertain Fordham. Back to you guys. All right, thanks, John. It's a lot easier here. The heat given off by the lights in here automatically make it a lot warmer in the, bar, uh, the Burger Bar City Football House than it is on the field. But we do thank you for a great job on the sidelines today. So now you move forward, and we talked about Fordham, a team that right now is in the top ten in the rankings for the FCS. What do you take from what happened here and how that applies to next week against a very good team? Well, although you fell, fell short, um, you know, you played a good second half. Um, you found that your freshman quarterback isn't a fluke, you know, came out, performed very well. Uh, offense played well, I think, pretty much the whole game. You know, came, came up short on a couple fourth downs. Uh, but I, I think you can use that, build on it, and go into next week. It's been a resilient team, Maurice. I mean, the way the team started 0-3 to where it's come, so maybe it's not out of the ordinary to think that this team is going to come right back against a Fordham team, and then, of course, Lehigh the following week. Well, based on the second half, I mean, Lafayette really showed their potential today. They came out with a lot of emotion in the second half. They played like they were playing for a championship. Uh, so what you cannot do this week is fall flat because Ford Fordham is arguably the best team in the country. And they're coming to our house next week, and you, you don't want to get rolled by those guys. I mean, they beat Temple, they beat Villanova, pretty good team. So regroup, and, you know, let's focus on Ford. It'll be interesting to see about that offense injury to the quarterback today. Not sure how that will affect uh, his ability to play next week. But we talk about this game being a tale of two halves. When we get to the highlights, which we're going to do right now, you're going to see just what we mean. Let's go back up to the booth. Mojo's got the look at this game. Mike Joseph. Thanks, Maddie. And you're right. It was a tale of two halves. And that first half really began in that first quarter with uh, McCarney kind of running that zone read and uh, Russell and uh, some of these other guys. Just terrific first half. You're going to see a third and ten right at first possession. Metaluna catches that football, picks up 11 yards and keeps that drive alive. And it ends with that Russell one yard touchdown. That was a ten play 79 yard drive after the third down conversion the only third down that they had on that drive mafia came right back completes a pass to sherman over the middle he picks up 20 yards gets that ball down for the ryan graylish field goal and at the uh, first half we were seven to three uh colgate really scored on all four possessions they had in the first half this is a huge kickoff return which came right after the field goal jimmy de chico is going to take this back 74 yards Almost loses the football right here, gets it back. Lafayette uh, jumps on him right around the 14-yard line, and a couple plays later, Russell's in the end zone for his second touch. And Russell on the day, 21 carries, 97 yards. Gavin McCarney, 14 carries, 93 yards. At that point, it was 14 to three in the second quarter. Not much better for Lafayette, even though they did uh, work the football down the field again. And uh, later in the quarter to get a touchdown, this is a Pavalco touchdown, 21 to three. And then Lafayette went to two consecutive. Uh, plays down the field here big brandon hall catching a flag route gets it down inside the five yard line and sherman cashes in it's 21 to 10 at that point lafayette playing pretty well on offense scored two of their four possessions but gavin mccarney was on fire in that first half we talked about how he completed pretty much every one of his passes russell gets in the end zone for his third touchdown in the first half so at that point you figured 28 to 10 lafayette's in big trouble and they're going to have to go into the locker room and really kind of figure out what happened well they did that they came out in that third quarter they got the football coming out of the half greg kessel with some nifty running greg kessel ended the day with 27 yards just seven carries but two consecutive wheel routes sherman on one and then sherman on another one just a beautiful throw right here from the freshman drew reed he's going to drop it into the bucket and lafayette cuts into that lead now down just seven 17 excuse me a great interception here by smalley as colgate fails in the red zone lafayette gets the football back the bootleg and the wheel route again and this is sherman wide open in the end zone now lafayette 28 to 24 at that point and that was just at the end of the third quarter in the fourth quarter again lafayette continued to play well but this was that huge fourth down and one Frank talked about how he kind of got overruled, and if you can't get a yard, you really probably maybe don't deserve to win the football game, but Kessel could not get it. Too much penetration. Jake McTy made some huge plays with Loya Kona at the end of the game to get Lafayette the football back, and it ended on this little flag route right here by Mark Ross. You know, Mark right there had his hands on the football, but Josh Ford breaks it up. 
And, uh, you know, just the tale of two halves. you got to play four quarters. Lafayette did not do that today, but they have a lot of potential, and Drew Reed is leading them. Well, I take away two things. First of all, Drew Reed has now completed 81% of his passes for 1,064 yards. His first pass, pass as a collegiate was an interception. He has now gone 75 for 92 since then. He has 13 touchdowns in three and a half games. And you mentioned it. Lafayette loses the first half 28-10. They win the second half 14 nothing. But 14 wasn't enough to catch the 28. So uh, the Lepers go down to defeat. So uh, back to you guys. We'll see you next week against Fordham. Well, thanks, guys. Great job, as always, up there in the booth. And uh, some final thoughts from you know two guys, two All-Americans who have been in the trenches in tough and close games like this. What do you take from this uh, as we leave today? Well, again, I can't stop talking about Drew Reed, you know, and how, how he's come out here. Just the poise, um, the intelligence for, for an inexperienced freshman quarterback. Uh, Got to gotta leave you with a lot and, and uh, high hopes for the future. And Maurice, again... They were able to batten down the hatches when they had to. <laughs> they were. I mean, when you look at the, the, the stats for the game here, uh, Colgate ended up with 197 yards rushing on the ground total, but 172 yards came in the first half. So you're looking at a Lepers defense that gave up 25 yards on the ground in the second half. I mean, that's an awesome statistic right there that they can take to Fordham. Oh, no doubt about it. We'll need to do more of that next week. Guys, it's been a pleasure yet again. We'll be here again next week. Fordham in town, as we've talked about, it is a 3.30 kickoff time. At that point, we will get started with our pregame show here on the Lafayette Sports Network. Now, until next week, we want to thank everybody involved with this program. A great job by the RCN crew and, of course, the three guys that we've alluded to all day long with Gary, Mike, and John. For Phil, for Maurice, this is Matt Province saying so long and farewell. Again, your final tonight, Colgate. Able to get out of here with a win 28-24. Until next week, roll pards.